Charles Zondamo. Uh, and the brother who will be breaking the bread of life is Brother Ruben from Bolivia. May we sit tight and buckle up as Jesus and his co pilot takes us through. Amen, Church? Leprosy. 
One, they are saying there is pain, painless ulcers on the soles of the feet. You will have ulcers that are not uh, painful. And if you check uh, seen as well, as, as, it, as it starts and progresses, when you start uh, disobeying God, of course the Holy Spirit will talk to you in, uh, I would say, you, you feel guilt at first, but as time goes on, you will not feel that guilt. It's painless. It's like lepros. So you do not be, you do not feel that guilt anymore. You feel, yeah, this is normal. It's normal. And uh, other signs of leprosy are loss of eyebrows or eyelashes, the numbness of affected areas of the skin. If you look at sin as well, just like I, uh, I just explained now, when we continue to, to sin and sin or disobey God, that guiltness goes right to God, it goes away because I have greeted the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will no longer speak to me like He used to speak to me when I start to disobey God. It's because of our stubbornness, the Holy Spirit stops to speak to us. And another last sign that I, that I got is muscle weakness or paralysis. Muscle weakness or paralysis. If you look at sin as well, as you continue to sin or disobey God, you will have no power again to, to, to restrain other kinds of sin. You will not have any um, power in you because we know we can do nothing uh, on our own. And that's, when you, when you obey God, we, 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 we lose that power that he gives us to resist sin. Just like uh, lepros, we become weak and we will not have that power to resist the sin that comes to us. We we'll just sin right, left, and center. Um, as we know in the Bible times, maybe even now, leprosy uh, was considered, an, if you have leprosy, you are considered unclean and you are not supposed to be among uh, the community. You are considered an outcast. And we know how God uh, detests sin. Just like leprosy. If you have leprosy, you are considered unclean. In God's eyes, when He, look, uh, when he looks upon us, if I disobeyed him or I have sinned. Romans 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and, fe and fell short of the glory of God. So if I sin, it means I, I, I fall short of the glory of God. And God stands his back from me because sin is, uh, he detests sin and does not want to look upon someone who had sinned unless we ask for forgiveness. And God has provided that, uh, that uh, opportunity for us to ask for forgiveness. And until we ask for forgiveness, it's when God, um, it's, it's when God delights to, to be with us. It's when, it's when God can look to us and talk to us and answer our prayers. Now, because sin leads to death, um, lepros, on the other hand, I'm comparing lepros with sin. 
And by the way, uh, some of us who, who likes uh, titles, the title is the leprosy of sin. The leprosy of sin, or you can say the sinfulness of sin. Yes, so leprosy in the, in the, in the Bible times was, was, was a disease that was considered, uh, you, you're considered an outcast. And you're not allowed to mingle with any other people. And uh, sin also, on the other hand, I, I know that uh, God uh, says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us from all our sins. But if we continue to sin and sin and sin, the Holy Spirit will withdraw himself from us because he does not dwell uh, where evil is. He will, he will withdraw from us. Now, let's get into our sermon now. Um, I believe each one of us have um, encountered, yeah, I have read a, a man called Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus. It means son of Timaeus. Let's open our Bibles in the book of Mark, chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Verse 47 through to 52. Mark chapter 10, verse 47. So they start from 46 to 52. I was reading from the NIV version of the Bible. All right, uh, let's go together. Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 50, 52. I'm reading in your hearing. Then they came to Jericho, as Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. 48. Many rebuked him and told him to keep quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called, they called to the blind man, Cheer up. On your feet, he is calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. 51, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. 52, go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Can we pray? Dear loving Father in heaven, here is a piece of scripture that we just read, Lord, about Bartimaeus, a blind man, whom 
you heal from his blindness, oh Father. We ask and pray, Lord Father, to may speak to us, Lord Father, with his word. A few words, Father, to just pray. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We don't know whether um, this man, Bartimaeus, blindness was the cause of sin or not. But what we know is that he used to beg. He was, a, he was blind and he was a beggar. He used to beg on the road going to, from Jerusalem to Jericho. And as we just read, this man came, encountered Jesus. And if you follow correctly, this was the last time uh, Jesus was passing that way and because he was going to be crucified. And this too was the last time that this blind man, Bartimaeus, this was his last chance to be restored for his sight to be restored. Now, they, they are saying uh, where he was, it was, uh, it was about nine miles from there, going to, to Jericho. And, and uh, in kilometers I checked, and it's about 24, 24 kilometers. And um, the, the, the interesting uh, thing is this one. Uh, this Bartimaeus, because he was blind, and because he used on that particular, he used to sit on that particular spot all his life, begging for people to give him money, because he had a cloth that he laid on the ground for people to put, uh, to throw whatever the coins or money there. This man used to listen when people pass they told their stories. He used to listen and he had heard a lot of things that God, that Jesus had done to other people. He had heard uh, people talking, uh, chatting while they are passing until they, he cannot hear them anymore because they are walking. He was hearing them talking of Jesus feeding 5,000 people. He heard these stories and he had heard of the stories of Jesus turning wine, water into wine. People who were passing there were talking these stories and Bartimaeus was listening. He had heard of He had heard of, of people talking of, of this Jesus who had come the storm on the Sea of Galilee when he was with his disciples. And he had heard about uh, many lepers who had come, came to him and told him that he was healed by Jesus. And he had heard a lot of stories that gave him faith that Jesus can do it for me if he did it for others. Now, on this last chance that he had, Jesus was passing by with his disciples and a crowd followed him. And as he heard people talking, like he heard people talking of other stories he heard, of people saying, Jesus is passing by. And right then, he told himself that this is my last chance. This is my last time for me as well to be healed by Jesus. And in verse 47, we get that story that he stood up and called son, uh, Jesus 
son of David, have mercy on me. And in verse 48, it tells us that many, many, many people rebuked him. That be quiet, shut up. But this man did not give up. He continued even more. He shouted to the fullness of his lungs. And at last Jesus heard him. In verse 40, 48, maybe it's, maybe it's you as well. You have been crying to God. Or you have been seeking advices to other people. And you are given wrong advices. But Bartimaeus did not give up. People rebuked him, be quiet. But he shouted even more until Jesus heard him. The book of Jeremiah 29 verse 13 says, You will seek me and find me if you seek me with all your heart. Maybe you have been seeking Jesus Christ. Maybe you are this Bartimaeus as well. Maybe you have uh, set on this road of despair. Maybe you have set um, this road of difficulties that you have been facing. You know all these problems that you have been facing. Maybe you have been sitting there and sitting with this problem that you have been sitting all along. Like Bartimaeus did, he was blind for many years. He had been sitting for, on this road many years uh, while he was hearing good things happen around him. Maybe this is you as well. Maybe you are the Bartimaeus of today. You have heard what God has done with others. And while you still continue to suffer, while you are still blind spiritually, Maybe this is the time. Maybe Jesus is passing by today. And he wants to open your eyes, your spiritual eyes. Maybe I'm blind spiritually and Jesus is passing by today. I've been sitting with all these issues of mine. But Jesus says, you shall seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. The scriptures here encourage us not to give up. We should shout even more to the fullness of our lungs. And Jesus, who is in the secret place, will hear us and answer us. In verse 49, And downwards, we, we, we see of, of Jesus uh, calling this man when he had heard that he was calling him. And Bartimaeus threw away his cloak and went to Jesus Christ. This tells us that Bartimaeus had faith that he no longer need this cloak that he used to beg money. He had faith that he will be healed and he will not be a beggar anymore. And as this comes to us as well, we need to believe like Bartimaeus did. If we evaluate ourselves and think in us, there are a lot of things that have been troubling us. We have been sitting with them there. Just like Bartimaeus was blind for many years. And he had a one uh, a life uh, time opportunity, and he grabbed it and he used it. Jesus Christ asked him, "What can I do for you?" That was an open-ended question. And if, if it was you and me, maybe we would answer differently. Maybe we would say, "I want a job," or "I want what." But Bartimaeus knew his desire. And his desire was to see. Maybe your desire today is for your eyes to open, spiritual eyes to open. Maybe you are still blind. But Amos was blind physically, and his desire was to see. 
And Jesus rightly granted his request because he knew his greatest desire was to see. And so the lesson to us today is let us not leave this opportunity to pass by. We'll be sitting there with problems. We know ourselves. Let us learn from the blind Bartimaeus and grab this uh, opportunity to come to God. His blood flowed so that we can be saved. So that our guilty stains can be washed away. That we see no more. We don't know what uh, the cause of the blindness of Bartimaeus, like I said. Maybe it was because of sin. We know everything that happens, anything bad that is on earth today is because of sin. So maybe I'm spiritually blind. Unlike Bartimaeus, he was physically blind. But I can see now, but spiritually maybe I'm blind. This is the time for me and you to stand up and to call God and seek Him with all our hearts and He will surely answer us and He will open our spiritual eyes as we continue to work for Him. We see when Bartimaeus was healed, he followed Jesus. So, my brothers and my sisters, let us be serious and ask God because he will give us. Matthew chapter 7, it says, Ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door will open. If you just sit there at that road like Bartimaeus did and do nothing, God knows our needs, but he cannot give us if we don't ask. Let us ask and we shall receive. With this, may the Lord bless his readings. Amen. What do we say to that again? Amen. Amen. Uh, as we stand to finish off the song with verses 3, 4, 5, and 6 of 336.
Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for Jesus who died for us. We thank you for the blood that flowed from his veins to please us from all unrighteousness. We come before your throne of grace this afternoon, Father. We would like to thank you for your son, O Father. In our midst, Father, around here, Father, now in the church, we have uh, different problems, O Father, that we sit with, Lord. And maybe we have sat with them for a long time, O Father. We pray and ask, Lord, for that may, may you speak to us, o Father. May your Holy Spirit speak to us to come to you, O Father. To talk to you, O Father, with all our hearts. We pray and ask, Lord, Father, that may you end our sufferings, O Father. May you give us courage, O Father. Give us strength to continue, Lord, Father. We know that sufferings are not going to end. We understand, Lord. But may you give us courage, power, Father, to continue to persevere, Father, through all the sufferings that we encounter in this life, Father. We pray and ask that you may be with us, Lord, Father, till Jesus comes, O Father. We pray and ask that your will be done. Amen.